So now we know that this is our release clip. We can work on it a bit harder in the hope that it does release. Um, it didn't push down in very easily, but maybe if I can get in under it, or, oh, oh, that nearly did it. <laughs> yep. Hmm. It's quite painful to try and... Ugh. Well, it is bending, but I cannot hold this little thin bit of steel and pull on things at the same time. It really hurts. I think what I'll do... Let's try and go in under this way. If I can get in under the edge of that strip and maybe push the plastic, the brown plastic, without uh, uh, without breaking off this this chrome strip, maybe. <laughs> because remember, we've got to we've got to get under that edge there. If I can do that. I might I might is it working? Not quite to plan. Wedge something under there. Ah there we go. Wedge that under there. And then I can come back with that. Because I want to get that in there we go. I wanted to get that in there. So you see how I've got that now over the plastic clip. So it's holding it down out from the metal edge. I should be able to pop this whole thing out. Yeah? Because the only thing that was holding it was that clip. So if we try and encourage that to release... It should all just slide out that way, but I need to somehow get purchase on on it. Can I get under here and encourage it? Or is it just gonna bend stuff, isn't it? Maybe I can pull it from the back side. Try and pull. Is it coming? Or is it just the chrome edge that's coming? It is kind of coming. It's definitely coming. It is what I expected. Oh, there we go. Now we're separating. Hey, wonderful. All right. So we're fighting a bit of tension on the wires as they're zip tied in there. But at least we got it off in one piece. There we go. And it looks like one of the heater. Okay, so the heater element uh, terminal has come off. I don't know if it came off when I pulled this out. Because they were on pretty tight on the other one. I doubt someone else has actually been in here. But this is said to be on at full speed all the time. So what I'm going to do, I'll just leave the heater unplugged. And then we'll plug it in. We'll see if the display is responding. I don't really want to put... If it is a shorted triac, I didn't want to switch it on uh, into a 2 kilowatt load. Or, or plug it in into a 2 kilowatt load. It's quite a spark. But yeah, at least with that unplugged now. I can't think someone else has been in here. <laughs> that would have been smart to figure out how to release it. Let's uh, plug it in. Okay, we get the zero come up. And I should be able to... So it is controlling. So now I just need to maybe take a measurement or two and see why it might be always on. So with it unplugged, I'll just do a diode check across the leads to the triac. So we have pink is our 
control line and blue and yellow are our uh, AC in and AC out and if I check the blue and yellow there's no short and if I go gate gate to white yellow we get 0 0.07 and um, nothing to gate to the other pin and in reverse so that looks normal yeah you do get a funny reading on a triac where it's gate to one side is 0 0.07 and then there's nothing anywhere between the other pins so at least it's not showing shorted tell you what though this this wire appears to be melted through like it's either broken or melted through there either someone's um has been in here before and cut through the heat shrink or it's actually maybe come off and has it come off and touched something else and that's why it was always on is it somehow arced through it's hard to say if it's burnt or not but it's definitely not pretty okay so one one of these wires our phase our, our line phase in is loose so that's not a good start Let's tighten that up. Give that a squeeze back together. And that one could be a bit loose too. Might as well squeeze that back together. And the other two with our, our neutral, that's loose. <laughs> okay, they're all loose. Squeeze that one back together. That's definitely is neutral I guess let's just make sure um, it looks like it okay uh, that's all right so phase okay phase should be coming directly in here into there you go so phase should have come directly into that pin there so that's, that is how it was just make it nice and tight the heater element at one side is very tight we have our neutral coming in here and then we have our other heater wire let's see if we can get that back on that terminal and we have our other heater wire which came off and looks physically damaged for some reason uh, it has to come in here so I'll just uh, bend all that out the way and that comes down into here okay Tighter than I'd expect. Okay, it's good though. Should be tight. Passing two kilowatts through something, it has to be tight. Well, let's let's plug it in then, and see what happens. So something weird going on there. It does look. Dirty? Or is that a shadow? I was going to say it almost looks like a bit of carbon, like something did let go in there. It's like, yeah, that's not, that's really weird what's going on there. I wonder if that um, came into contact with the, oh, okay. <laughs> that's what would have happened. There's, um, there's scorching on the oh, oh this is this is this is getting better all right you can actually see scorching there's this scorching around here this is soot and there's damage to the edge there this this wire that obviously came off and made contact here um, is the the neutral control end of the element so while the other end was live all the time, this wire came off, it should have been going through the triac, but instead it just hit earth, and it would have been passing full power through to this metal piece that it was jammed up against. And how that would happen under normal circumstances is just unbelievable. Without someone opening this and maybe leaving it hanging floating, or when it was put together in the factory, maybe it ripped it off and jammed it hard against the when they when they put it in, it could have 
could have been, yeah, just pulled it off and it's always been jammed hard against the frame. But that'll certainly do it. That'll, that'll give it always on and no control. Um, I'm going to trust that and just plug it in now. And in theory, it shouldn't come on under full load. Three, two, one, on. Oh. Okay. So we have E2 on the display. That's error 2. Error 1 means no filament. Error 2 means what? Let's, for the sake of something, test. Let's test the resistance of the element there. I'll poke you over there so you can see the multimeter. Uh, unit is un unplugged. And if we probe there and there, let's see what the do we have an element resistance 37 ohms? That doesn't sound too bad, does it? Let's try that again. It was face down. Maybe that was the tilt switch activating. I'm just going to point it like that. Ah, yes, we're on zero. Let me get the remote so I don't have to touch that while it's loose. All right. Level one. Do we get heat? I do feel some heat. Level two. Do we get more heat? Yep, that ramped up. Level three. There we go. And level four. Really cranking in there. Should be 100% power. Alright, so that's all it was, huh? Just a wire come off. But why? That's the weirdest thing. You know how hard it was to get this open? I can't imagine anyone was in there. It has to have been sort of a um, manufacturing defect, perhaps, that, that just presented itself eventually, however it happened. But 36 ohms, if my calculations are wrong, was about 1500 watts at 230 volts. And it's got a sticker saying 2 kilowatts. Maybe they're trying to... A uh, bit of false advertising there. <laughs> well, anyway, let's make sure it's all secure inside. We'll just unplug that and um, put it all back together. I like a fix that doesn't need parts. So we will precariously balance that there. And attempt to refit this all back in. edge and slide it in and it should all just line up maybe if I put it end down so I can lean against something that's working a bit better that side's going in should click maybe <laughs> this side going in well almost but it really doesn't want to sit flush really got to get that side in there like that. It's like a chiropractic adjustment almost. Oh. And we've just got a little bit of non-compliance with the chrome strip. I think the cables really are bunching up in there something stupid. Makes me wonder if I shouldn't just cut the zip tie off them and let them move a little freely. I tell you, this thing's going to be a blimmin' fight to the death. I've repositioned the cables underneath as best I can, but I know that if I get that tucked in there, it still wants to come out at the edge there. It just wants to lift ever so slightly. So I think I need to reposition the cables perhaps once more. If I can get this thing back apart, because I haven't clipped it in yet. It's a bit tricky though because everything plugs into that one side of the board So I think what I might have to do I think what's happening actually is If I go like that um, Here's the triac leads 
and I've got the element connection in behind there and I think it's pushing these out just past the edge of the board where there's probably no room for them. So if I take the uh, spade connector off for the element and pop it, push these out the way and then pop it back on, it'll hold everything aside. So let's just do that. While I've got it off, I'm thinking, thinking my finger really hurts. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm thinking maybe I should put a bit of heat shrink over that where it burned through. I don't know. Do I have any of that size? Standby. No, I know. You're probably going, you should have blimmin' done that before. Well, this is where we're at. Let me, let me just, that's better. Here we go. Let's be thorough about all of this, huh? <laughs> It's unlikely to come off and touch anything it shouldn't ever again. So here's a bit of heat shrink. Oh, I just need some. Oh, we'll hold it with that, shall we? Come in with the hot air. I want to get both sides of that. There you go. Now I'm thinking like an expert. So that's going to hang on just enough to cover that and keep you lot happy. So we will shove that back on where I was going to put it initially. Which was there. Come on. Head on it. There we go. And now as you can see, it's put the leads to the triac on the left side and pushed them out the way so they're not reaching around and trying to bunch up and cause a problem. So hopefully that's now going to slide in. Feed that in. Oh, that's uh, kind of kind of sort of that way and that's kind of sort of that way and that's uh, going down oh no oh there it goes yep now too far in the front now oh, lift it up there we go all right ah it's that feels better already that's sitting sitting down there click ah oh, you beauty <laughs> check that out it's not sticking out anymore. Who would have thought just that little bit of pressure and it would have been pushing up in the center, distorting everything, pushing on the board. But uh, there we have it. All back together. One more test flight, shall we? There we have it. We've got number zero on the dial. Hit number one. Nice, gentle, warm. And if I touch the grill, I don't get electrocuted. So. Nothing untoward there. <laughs> Number two. Launching. Number three. Even better, you can see the orange glow coming in nice. And number four. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. Now I'm going to turn it off before it melts everything in close proximity because that cranks out a fair amount of heat. Here we have it. Heater number two. Fixed. Thanks again for watching, don't forget to check out heater number one if you made it to this video somehow accidentally and were quite disappointed at the lack of interesting stuff to happen. But heater number one, that was more interesting. Catch you all next time.